so let's uh, discuss a topic from quantum mechanics that is uh, Dirac's equation in covariant form which could also be said in this form that is covariant formulation of Dirac's equation so how to write Dirac's equation in covariant form that one we are going to discuss now so it has already been pointed out that the relativistic formulation of equation of motion requires linearization of energy e and momentum p though this requirement is fulfilled by Dirac equation so in the process of uh, uh, relativistic uh, formulation of equation of motion uh, which requires uh, linearization of energy and momentum energy and momentum must be uh, linear form that is Hamiltonian hzi is equals to we, we know that hzi is equals to ih cut dou xi by dou t uh, uh, where h is nothing but c into alpha dot p plus beta mc square so this is nothing but linearization of energy and momentum so uh, uh, though this requirement is fulfilled by Dirac equation so this is the requirement that is linearization of momentum as well as energy that Hamiltonian uh, so h is z is equals to i has got dou xi by dou t and xi is a function of position vector as well as time xi of r comma t here also xi of r comma t so that is nothing but uh, uh, just like the uh, from the Schrodinger equation we have this form h is i is equal to i has got uh, dou xi by dou t time dependent so the here as the wave function is depending on time it is a function of time so this is uh, this would be time dependent form from the time dependent Schrodinger equation we are having this but it does not appear in covariant form here so we proceed to find its covariant form so here it is not appearing in covariant form because this is a position term position it uh, it uh, says that uh, it is uh, deals with, deals with uh, position coordinates this space but this is a time coordinate so there are two different uh, it seems like as if there are uh, two different coordinates the wave function is depend depending on two different coordinates two separate coordinates so now we wanted to find it in a covariant form so this could be done as follows replacing pk is also minus i has got do by do xk so pk we know that uh, px is nothing but minus i has got do by do x and py is nothing but minus i h cut dou by dou y so in the same form pk could be written as minus i h cut dou by dou xk okay so e equation 1 may be expressed as so for by this uh, we can express this equation 1 this is equation 1 now this converts to so in the place of p minus i h cut dou by dou xk so actually alpha is nothing but uh, alpha x i cap plus alpha y j cap plus alpha z k cap in the same form same manner p x p bar is nothing but p x i cap plus p y j cap plus p z k cap so what we would get is uh, after the dot product between these both you would get alpha x p x plus alpha y p y plus alpha z so here it is alpha x p x plus that is nothing but summation again al uh, alpha y p y again plus alpha z p z so that is indicated by this with the help of this summation so that one we need to substitute here here c is already there so that c and alpha is nothing but alpha k like that and p is nothing but minus i h cut dou by dou x k and next thing is what we need to do is we need to send this term to this side so after sending to that side what we will get is here plus is there after going to that side minus i h cut dou by dou t and xi is common for both for this and for that so x power k comma t here r is r bar is replaced with x k so r can be written as x i k plus y j k plus z k k that is nothing but x power k form x1 x2 x3 like that in the place of x y z 
like that and next here already beta mc square is there so that one we would write as usual into say of uh, uh, xk uh, comma t equals to zero next is uh, what we need to do is uh, here the, they are taking minus ih cut common in this part here from here so minus ih cut uh, have been taken common and even c also here you can see beta mc square is there but here it is beta mc so c has to be taken common so after taking c common from here what would remain is beta mc here uh, c term so this c term after taking minus ih cut c what would remain is only this summation alpha k dou by dou xk so summation k equals 1 to 3 alpha k dou by dou xk uh, k ranges from 1 to 3 x1 x2 x3 just like x y z and next here in this uh, minus ih cut c is not there in the numerator so into c by c so after taking minus ih cut by c common 1 by c would be remaining dou by dou t next uh, very important thing uh, we need to do so in order to get covariant form is here it is xk but here it is t still it is not in a covariant form it looks like these both are two separate coordinates two different uh, coordinates so now what we need to do is using ct is also x naught so in the place of ct we need to replace it with x naught and multiplying on the left by beta we get so here what we need to do is in the place of c dou t as here it is given ct is also x naught if uh, we differentiate on both sides c is a c is a constant c dt is also dx naught so here c dt just as uh, here positive differentiation is there so c dou t that is nothing but dou x naught it would become dou by dou x naught this entire term would become dou by dou x naught and here alpha k dou by uh, dou x k would remain as usual next what they are saying is we need to multiply on both sides with beta uh, multiplying with beta on both sides why means here one beta is there if we multiply beta with beta beta square that is nothing but i that is the property of uh, Dirac's matrices so that's why you need to multiply with uh, beta so into beta if we do so here dou by dou x naught is would become it would become that and here beta would come here also beta alpha k dou by dou x k and here in the place of uh, t it is replaced with uh, x naught that means uh, t multiplied with constant c is nothing but x naught we are just multiplying t with a constant so x k x naught because here we are having uh, x naught now here so in this place we are having x naught here so that's why here it should be a function of x naught in the place of t uh, x k that is c t and next here beta square is nothing but i and m c would be there and do x k in the place of t x naught so this is the form so now it somewhat looks like yeah, as if it is covariant so x naught x k looks like covariant so next so this is the equation we have got this equation is now symmetry is now symmetrical in x k and c t so this equation is now symmetrical before previously it was r t as if there, there is no relation uh, distinguishing like that now it is symmetrical in this both terms let us now define a set of four matrices called western dirac's gamma matrices as follows so next uh, we need to let us now uh, define a uh, set of four matrices that is nothing but Western Dirac's gamma matrices. So, uh, actually, uh, alpha and beta matrices were there. Now, the gamma matrices. So, how, how is that means? Gamma mu, mu is ranges from 0, 1, 2, 3 matrices as follows. So, uh, in the definition of gamma matrices, that is nothing but beta is nothing but gamma naught beta matrix matrix beta is nothing as usual gamma naught but here we are having beta into alpha k here we are having only beta that is nothing but gamma naught for dou by dou x naught and here here if we see here we are having beta into alpha k so that is nothing but gamma k so for a x1 is equals to k is also 1 k equals to 2 k equals to 3 we would be having hence this is for k equals 1 2 3 and this is for uh, k uh, k sorry uh, x naught 
So gamma naught is equal to beta, gamma k is equal to beta into alpha k. These are nothing but gamma matrices. Then equation 2 may be written as. So uh, now we can write this equation 2. After from this definition of gamma matrices, we need to replace here. So what will come is uh, here uh, we need to take h cut common from this. Yeah, he has there is no h cut here. So into h cut by h cut that is nothing but mc by h cut z of x mu. Uh, mu can be z as mu can be 0, 1, 2, 3. We are now uh, we are not having now separately x naught xk. We are now uh, now having x mu. So uh, just a single reduced to single uh, coordinate like type. So uh, h cut uh, we need to take common from this. So h cut here also h cut if we would take common minus i would be remaining here and beta is nothing but uh, that is a gamma naught and here if we see beta into alpha k is nothing but gamma k. So overall what we would have is as uh, mu ranges from 0 1 2 3 so we would have dou by dou x mu in the place of dou by dou x naught dou by dou x k we are having dou by dou x mu and in the place of uh, beta alpha k beta so all these are nothing but gamma matrices so minus i gamma mu into xi of x mu is equal to 0 finally equation 2 could be written in this form where uh, mu is nothing but 0 1 2 3 so that form so my uh, this is the form So this equation appears in a covariant form because here space and time derivatives are treated on equal footing. Now here if we see here there is no separate space coordinate and uh, time coordinate. We are having only x mu. So here space and time coordinates are treated on equal footing. So now this equation appears to be covariant form. From known form of matrices, so we know about the alpha and beta matrices, the Rx matrices, and equation 3. And based on this equation 3, the gamma matrices have so uh, gamma matrices could be represented as gamma naught is nothing but beta, so gamma naught beta and beta is nothing but i 0 0 minus i that is 1 0 0 1. And here we again null matrix again null matrix again minus 1 0 0 minus 1. So that is beta and next for finding another matrices gamma k that is uh, mu mu of uh, spk so that is nothing but remaining matrices uh, if we take up that is nothing but product of beta into alpha k so beta multiplied with alpha k so beta is nothing but i0 zero, 0 minus i so this one multiplied with alpha k matrices that is nothing but Dirac matrices we know that 0 sigma k sigma k 0 that is null matrix again Pauli matrix again Pauli matrix again 0 matrix so 0 1 1 0 like that uh, here everything would be 0 0 0 0 and here uh, 0 1 1 0 like that again here also 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 like that like that we are remaining all poly spin matrices so if we do a product of this uh, uh, both matrices we would get matrix of this form that is null matrix sigma k minus of sigma k and 0 so these are nothing but the gamma matrices gamma matrices would have uh, this form so next is this representation is due to Feynman known as Feynman representation of matrices. From this definition we obtain. So based on uh, this represent, representation that is uh, this representation of these matrices. It is based on Feynman representation. And next from these definitions we obtain. So uh, from the definition of these gamma matrices what we would obtain. So gamma k whole uh, transpose conjugate if we take. So this is nothing but. Uh, transpose uh, this symbol indicates transpose of that particular matrix as well as its conjugate conjugate as well as transpose both put together so gamma k whole transpose conjugate so if we do transpose conjugates so we know that gamma k is nothing but beta into alpha k now only we have seen so that is nothing but actually we have the formula so that is uh, 
a b whole transpose if we take gen in general so that is nothing but b transpose into a transpose then only we would have a transpose so same here also uh, beta into alpha k whole transpose that is nothing but first of all alpha k transpose multiplied on the left hand side multiplied with beta transpose just like this so we would have this next as alpha k transpose is equals to alpha k and beta tra transpose that is alpha k transpose conjugate is equals to alpha k and beta transpose conjugate is equal to beta based on the properties of uh, uh, the Dirac's matrices they are Hermitian Hermitian is nothing but a is equals to a transpose conjugate so uh, alpha k transpose conjugate is nothing but alpha k again again beta transpose conjugate is nothing but beta again so which would be equal to minus beta into alpha k based on the anti-commutation rules followed by the direct matrices, matrices that is alpha x beta plus beta alpha x equals to 0 alpha y beta plus beta alpha y equals to 0 so based on that formula alpha k beta is also minus beta alpha k that is nothing but again beta into alpha k is nothing but gamma k so minus gamma k so if we are doing transpose conjugate of gamma matrices we are getting negative of gamma k that is nothing but anti hermitian so here here so that is gamma naught is hermitian gamma k is or anti hermitian because gamma k whole transpose conjugate is equals to minus gamma k however gamma naught transpose conjugate would be equal to gamma naught so that is hermitian next thing is gamma naught square and that is nothing beta square that is nothing but equal to i matrix that is uh, 1 and gamma k whole squares would be minus 1 so that is the difference among these matrices this gamma naught matrices and this gamma k matrices as it is hermitian and this is anti hermitian in so it then follows that the gamma matrices obey the commutation relations so gamma matrices would obey the following commutation relation so that is uh, they would obey the commutation relation that is gamma mu gamma nu plus gamma nu gamma mu is also 2g mu nu i so this is the commutation rule followed by the gamma matrices so if we take the gamma matrices any two gamma matrices and if we do their product in this form a b plus b a like that form if we if we take uh, suppose gamma 1 matrix and gamma 2 matrix multiply them both plus again gamma 2 into gamma 1 so again if we add the products we would have this form 2 into g mu nu i this is the form we used to get where g mu nu is the metric uh, so it is a metric tensor given by g 0 0 is equal to 1 g 0 0 0 is 1 that is and mu nu is equals to 0 that is gamma naught into gamma naught so as here we are having gamma naught into gamma naught is equals to i so here also you would have gamma naught into gamma naught i again here also gamma naught into gamma naught i i plus i that is nothing but 2i where uh, g mu nu would become 1 so like that in the similar fashion if we do for the remaining matrices also we would get uh, commutation relation for gamma matrices in this form here uh, only thing is this uh, metric would get come into display extra term and g11 is, is also g22 is also g33 is also minus 1 if you substitute gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 like that if we do so we would have here minus 1 and gamma mu nu is also 0 so if we take gamma 1 gamma 2 or gamma 2 gamma 3 gamma 3 gamma 1 like that where mu is not equal to nu in such case we would have uh, g mu nu is equal to 0 where uh, for mu is not equal to nu and i is the identity matrix here i is nothing but identity matrix it may also be noted that gamma matrices are unitary so these uh, gamma matrices are unitary matrices that is uh, gamma matrices are unitary means if a into a transpose conjugate if we multiply a matrix a with its, uh, with its uh, transpose conjugate we will get i that is nothing but uh, mul after multiplying with a inverse on both sides what finally we would get is a inverse of a matrix is equal to its transpose conjugate that means for any matrix if uh, 
it's a inverse that is inverse of that matrix if inverse of that particular matrix is equals to its transpose conjugate that is nothing but a uh, unitary matrix or else uh, a into a transpose conjugate is equals to i from this if you multiply with a inverse on both sides we would get this thing so that is nothing but a unitary matrix so these gamma matrices are also the unitary matrices so that is the thing next Now to establish the covariance of Dirac equation, we try to determine the transformation of wave function and a homogeneous Lorentz transformation and the new coordinates and wave functions be represented by primes, the new frame of reference runners. So in order to see the covariance of Dirac's equation, we need to determine transformation of wave function. So how the wave function is going to get transformed under homogeneous Lorentz transformation. So if we apply homogeneous Lorentz transformations, then how is the wave function is going to change? That one we have we need to observe now. So here it is mentioned that wave function is represented by primes. Let the new coordinates and wave functions be represented by primes. That is after uh, transformations. So just like uh, if we apply transformation like rotation of the axis so this is x axis and y axis so if we rotate them a little bit x axis a little bit y axis a little bit these are the new axes x dash y dash initially it was x y so this is nothing but transformation from uh, the, that is uh, in this uh, it is nothing but rotation of the axis so initially uh, it was x which changes to x dash uh, again initially it was y it changes to y dash after transformation so in the similar manner here also the coordinates gets changed from one form to another form after the transformation so it is represented by the primes so that is the thing they are saying here so uh, oh, so it is represented by primes so here it is x dash here z dash initially it was z now z dash initially it was x mu now it is x dash mu uh, representing that after transformation the coordinates change the form so in the new and in the new frame of reference it return has so in the new frame of reference that this is the equation we have got previously that is equation 4 the previous if we see is this equation this equation minus i gamma mu dou by dou x mu mc by h correct xi x mu so only thing is in the place of x mu x dash mu in the place of xi xi dash and x mu x dash mu and gamma would not uh, be changing gammas would not be changing their form so hence uh, this form we used to get so here it is mentioned gamma is not prime because it does not involve space time coordinates gamma matrices do not involve space and time coordinates so on transformation the space and time coordinates changes their form so because of that we are priming here and next thing is the lorentz transformation relating the coordinates in old and new frames are given by so now coming to the lorentz transformations uh, which relate the coordinates in old and new frames that means so uh, after transformation the coordinates old new coordinates could be expressed in some form of old coordinates suppose like uh, uh, after transformation x dash could be written as x plus y x plus a x plus 3 like that or else uh, x dash could be written as uh, x some for example x cos theta plus y sin theta so here if we see x dash is a function of this uh, that is this new coordinate x dash uh, is a function of after transformation uh, old coordinates so here also that's why we are having x dash mu is equals to x mu summation j equals 0 to 3 a nu mu so this is nothing but nu this is mu and x nu so uh, 
uh, what we would have is uh, that means summation of something uh, this uh, pre previous old coordinates multiplied with something some value again adding so here also we are doing the same we are multiplying this old coordinates with some uh, some constant again we are adding so like that so the if we consider this kind of transformation so like that only same here also the same case applies to here also so that's why it is mentioned that x dash mu is equals to summation and j equals 0 to 3 uh, uh, lambda nu mu x nu is equals to lambda nu mu x nu so in the matrix form so in the form of matrix we could write it has this same thing after uh, if we if we not consider this mu nu that is just the tensor form uh, so x dash is nothing but lambda x so this is the matrix form so these new coordinates multiplied with some uh, matrix gives us the uh, sorry this uh, old coordinates x multiplied with this uh, matrix transformation matrix gives us the new coordinates so which leaves the quadratic form invariant we have so it leaves the, the quadratic form uh, x mu x mu x mu x mu the invariant so this is contravariant this is covariant tensors x contravariant mu and x covariant mu like that so they are invariant next is now x dash mu is equals to g mu lambda x dash lambda from equation 9 they are saying so here in the equation 9 we are having x dash mu is equals to uh, lambda nu mu x mu so the same thing we are taking here uh, x dash uh, so lambda lambda it would get the uh, so here here nu here nu here would get uh, uh, eradicated and uh, mu would remain just like the tensor ranking of the tensor in inner products output products if we do so just like that we need to think so here x mu is there here also mu would remain so this new this new this is in the uh, covariant position this is in the contravariant position so they would get eliminated and we would get mu based on the properties of tensors here also mu here also mu in the same manner here also here uh, covariant x dash covariant mu is there so this is could be written as g mu lambda x dash lambda that is nothing but uh, the same thing the same uh, could be here lambda uh, covariant and here contravariant would get uh, eliminated and uh, mu covariant only mu would remain in the uh, covariant position so like that so x dash mu could be written has this form this uh, x dash uh, uh, covariant form uh, could be written in the form of contravariant tensors like this based on the tensors formula next x dash lambda as we have seen previously in the equation 9 that is nothing but equal to a lambda sigma x sigma just as in equation from equation 9 this is from the definition of tensors and this is from the equation 9 so we would have x dash lambda in the place of x dash lambda this thing now what we need to do is x dash mu into x mu 1 so as it is said here so this x mu x nu uh, that is contra and covariant uh, product is invariant so that one we are checking now so uh, x dash mu could be written from the equation 9 has this a nu mu g mu sorry uh, from equation 9 x dash mu here x dash mu a mu nu x nu so a mu nu x nu so this uh, this a mu nu and this x mu nu would 
is because of this x dash mu and x mu dash uh, as we have uh, found in the previous step that is uh, covariant that is nothing but g mu lambda and uh, remaining terms a sigma lambda x sigma so all these terms remaining all are these terms put together here are there these three terms so that's why we are having this form and next thing is uh, so here next thing is uh, now we need to now this is as usual a mu nu as usual g mu lambda as usual uh, a sigma lambda no change and only thing x mu that is also no change the only change is x sigma could be written as g sigma nu x nu based on the tensors formula here yeah, this new this new would uh, get eliminated um, and uh, sigma would remain as the rank of the tensor so there is another x sigma so x sigma would be written as g sigma nu x nu and next is the ortho normality condition is based on the ortho normality condition so this one multiplied with this one this is the new coordinates these are the new coordinates these are the old coordinates here prime is there so that is new coordinate here prime not there that is new coordinate so new coordinates is nothing but uh, equal to old coordinates so as they are uh, invariant so this uh, product of this new coordinates and this uh, product of this old coordinates uh, as they have to be equal so that is possible only when this condition is satisfied that is autonormality condition that is this uh, x nu mu g mu lambda a sigma lambda g sigma nu only this one is remaining so this one must be equal to 1 so that is the thing and next is what we need to do is we need to use this g sigma nu g sigma nu so sigma sigma would get eliminated again nu nu would get eliminated it could become one this is based on the properties of tensors and next g sigma nu is also g nu sigma this is from the covariant uh, property of covariant tensors so if we shift this terms we would get again the same there is no change of sign so from the based on the uh, properties of covariant tensors this symmetric property so we would have finally what we would have is now in this equation what we need to do is multiplying both side with g sigma nu covariant g covariant sigma nu on both sides we need to multiply so here you can see uh, actually sorry it is g nu sigma because g sigma nu is equal to g nu sigma actually we need to multiply g sigma nu but uh, if, even though if we interchange there is no change of sign so multiplying both sides with g nu sigma so g nu sigma 1 into g nu sigma and here g sigma nu g nu sigma would become 1 because g nu sigma is not g sigma nu so this product is equal to 1 so what would remain on the left hand side is a uh, that is lambda nu 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 mu g mu lambda this is capital uh, upper case lambda just we have capital a capital b and small a small b so this is capital lambda uh, here there is mentioning eta lambda upper case this is lambda lower case this is just like capital a and this is like small a like that and eta this is epsilon this is mu this is nu and this is gamma so finally you would have this form uh, after uh, uh, solving so this one would remain like this and next thing what we need to do is substituting sigma is equal to nu and summing over mu nu we get so in this formula we need to substitute sigma is equal to nu that then this would become g nu nu as sigma is equal to nu and uh, that is nothing but uh, equal to 1 g nu nu is 
equal to 1. So here it is g nu nu is equal to 1. And next is uh, mm, we need to sum over all the mu and nu's. That is mu nu's ranges from 0, 1, 2, 3 and lambda equals to 0 in above equation we get. So in this equation we need to do this changes. So sigma in the place of sigma nu so g nu nu 1 that is equal to 1 and here if we consider uh, in the when mu is equals to 0 if we consider so lambda nu 0 and mu uh, 0 we would get and lambda also we need to take 0 g 0 0 uh, that is nothing but 1 again here lambda See in the place of sigma nu, here sigma is there, here, this sigma is replaced with nu and lambda is 0, just like here. So, when mu is equal to 0, when mu is equal to 0, first of all, when mu is equal to 0, what we would have is lambda 0 nu. Here also, in the place of lambda 0, in, as sigma is equal to nu, lambda 0 nu, you would have. And here, nu, lambda, both are 0. So that is nothing but equal to 1. So we would have this one. Lambda nu 0 whole squared. These are the things we are getting to have here. And next thing is, next we need to substitute mu is equals to 1, mu is equals to 2, mu is equals to 3 and the corresponding lambda 0. So uh, when the mu, uh, mu is not equal to lambda, when mu is not equal to lambda, what we would get is 0. All those signs because g nu lambda from the metric uh, matrix we have g mu lambda equals to 0 when uh, mu is not equal to lambda so all uh, some terms would get eliminated only which terms would remain is when mu is equals to lambda that is mu is equals to 1 lambda is equals to 1 mu is equals to 2 lambda is equals to 2 so that is the thing here so a nu would remain as usual here also sigma nu when mu is equals to 1 uh, that is uh, mu is equals to lambda g11 g22 g33 like that so all of them are uh, um, so here you can see all of them are minus 1 g11 g22 g33 we are minus 1 only g00 is 1 so based on this what we would have is this term only for 1 remaining are 1 2 2 3 3 1 they all would become 0 so only what would remain is this is for g001 this is for g11 g22 g33 so hence there is summation and that is minus and a nu k k is nothing but 1 2 3 whole square is equals to 1 finally we would have this term based on the uh, these substitutions and based on the uh, those metric transverse definitions and next so this was the thing we were having so now a nu 0 sorry lambda nu 0 whole square could be written as 1 and this one sending on to the third plus summation k equals 1 to 3 a nu k whole square so as a nu k whole square is greater than 1 this sorry lambda nu 0 whole square is greater than 1 so we would have 1 plus something like that uh, sorry uh, i mean here it is just like this a nu 0 whole square is 1 plus something 1 plus something that means it is greater than 1 a nu 0 square is greater than 1 hence the square root of uh, like uh, we know that um, 1 plus some value here we are in some 0 0.5 like that if we say that is nothing but 1.5 so it is also greater than 1 so if we do the square root of this value definitely it is greater than 1 so we know that square root of 1 is 1 square root of 1.1 1.2 1.3 there are, are definitely greater than 1 square root of uh, 1.1 whatever we would take they would all would be greater than 1 so that is the thing they are mentioning here so a new 0 must be greater than or equal to 1 because a new whole square is equals to 1 plus something and square root of 1 plus something is definitely greater than 1 so hence uh, yeah, lambda nu 0 is greater than or equal to 1 as well as yeah, lambda nu 0 is less than or equal to minus 1 
that means if we do uh, minus 1.5 is obviously less than minus 1 so if we do the square of this it would be definitely be greater than 1 so 1.0 minus 1.03 like that all of them are definitely less than minus 1 hence we are having lambda nu 0 is less than or equal to minus 1 and uh, next thing is so if lambda nu 0 is greater than 1 and determinant of lambda is plus 1 we get proper homogeneous La Lorentz transformations based on this uh, definition so we are getting perfect transformations and next thing is now let us take now we have to take consider z dash of x dash of alpha so this is the new wave function after the transformation wave function and these are the new coordinates because they are primed x dash lambda so this new function would be a function of this new coordinates transformed coordinates so that is another z dash and this x dash alpha could be written as lambda x sigma based on the matrix which we have uh, considered previously previously we have derived this so this x dash is equal to lambda x this matrix form we have taken here x dash is equal to lambda x sigma so which could be written as uh, s of lambda multiplied with z of x alpha so this is the old wave function before the transformation and these are the which is a function of all coordinates so this one multiplied with some constant some matrix transformation matrix would give us this new wave function in uh, which is a function of new coordinates so that is the form and here if we see s into z this is nothing but simply s into z so in this z dash so z could be written as uh, sending this s to that side that is uh, s inverse into z dash or else we can we could multiply both sides with s inverse if we do that s inverse into s is nothing but i that is nothing but z of x alpha you would have and here s inverse of z dash of x dash alpha so this is the thing we are having so x dash alpha is also lambda x nu from and next thing is x dash nu x dash mu sorry x dash mu is nothing but a nu mu x nu so this is uh, we have only discussed this uh, formula so uh, fra we get flow from this formula what we would get they are saying is so so if we send this x nu to that side that is nothing but x dash mu by x nu so the same thing do x dash mu by do x nu just uh, we are taking diff, um, change in x dash mu change in x nu so from this ratio so has uh, lambda nu mu is a ratio between this both which could be written for small, a small change in x dash and x mu so this form so from this we would have this and so do by do x mu could be written as uh do by do x mu we need to keep aside do we need to multiply it with do x dash nu into do x dash nu so here do by do x mu is there if here uh, previously there is nothing is there so if we multiply with do x dash mu and divide with do x dash mu we would have multiplying do x dash nu here and dividing with do x dash nu so that is the thing we are getting from this so we this is nothing but this lambda capital lambda nu mu so in the covariant covariant means down nu we are having contravariant means up mu we are having so la, we would have lambda nu mu based on the so here up on the top nu is there so nu lambda nu here on the top mu is there so mu on the bottom mu is there so nu so here on the bottom mu is there so mu based on this formula only but uh, in interchange between nu mu so do by do x dash nu this one would remain as usual so this is the thing we are getting do by do x mu uh, this form uh, lambda nu mu do by do x dash nu so next thing is using 15 and 16 the direct equation can be written as so by using this 
fifteenth equation that is this psi of x alpha s inverse of z dash on this uh, do in the place of do by do x mu in the covariant form of Dirac's equation we need to replace it with lambda nu mu do by do x dash nu so we would get this form so here that is mentioning form of uh, lambda nu mu and do by do x dash and uh, in this place of xi we are having s inverse of xi dash of x dash mu so that is the thing we need to replace so here we can observe new wave function and new coordinates after the lorentz transformation so here in previously it was in old wave function and old coordinates now it is in new wave function multiplying on by s on left we get so on both sides if we do multiplication with s here as here s inverse is there s into s inverse would get uh, become uh, i so mc by h curve z dash x dash alpha would remain and here s inverse is taken out do by uh, do x dash nu z dash of x dash mu and here s into this one would remain so multiplying with s we would get this and lambda mu nu are complex numbers and therefore commute with s so these lambda mu nu's are the complex numbers so they would commute with s they are the same so it is obvious that equation 17 possesses the same form as dirac's equation provided so this is the same form as the dirac's equation before the transformation and except that is here we need to replace this with gamma nu so in the place of this we are replacing with gamma nu so uh, just as the previous dirac's equation which we have derived minus i h cut gamma dou by dou x as xi mc by h cut into xi so that is based on the previous uh, lorentz transform so this minus i gamma nu mu dou by dou x mu mc by h cut like that actually it is this So this in the beginning we are having so this so uh, it is here also it is of the same form but only thing is uh, is in the place of gammas we are having this term so in the place of gamma we are having this s lambda nu mu uh, gamma mu s inverse so that is nothing but equal to gamma mu mu uh, or equivalently now what we need to do is mul now multiplying with s inverse to the left and s on to the right of the above equation that means why we have to do like that means on to the left s inverse on to the right s so here what we will get s inverse gamma nu into s like that we will get so that is nothing but this so here what would happen s inverse into s is i here also s inverse into s is i so what would remain is only this one this term would remain and that is nothing but lambda mu nu gamma nu so that is nothing uh, mentioned here so thus the problem of covariance formulation of Dirac equation reduces to that of constructing s which sim satisfies equation 18 so we need to construct a particular s after transformation that is xi dash is equals to s into xi so that particular s we need to construct con con construct which uh, and it must satisfy this equation for this we consider the proper orthochronous homogeneous lambda transformation so for which uh, determinant of lambda is plus one and lambda zero is greater than one as the lorentz transformations or equivalent to infinitesimal notation of coordinates and it is sufficient to discuss the infinitesimal notations since finite notations can be obtained from by these by repeated applications so infinitesimal rotation means just simply a bit a uh, little bit if we rotate so this is the axis actual x-axis y-axis if we just rotate them a little bit just a little bit here it is not a little bit so just a little bit just with a little bit of difference if you rotate so that is nothing but infinitesimal rota rotation so here also if you rotate a little bit so we can't find a difference so that is uh, just uh, rotating a small bit so that is nothing but infinitesimal rotation so if we keep on rotating so like that 
if we this is uh, if we keep on rotating like that only like that only if we keep on rotating so we could have higher angles finally so that is nothing but a particular rotation is uh, sum of these infinitesimal rotations so that is the mentioning here so finite rotations can be obtained by this repeated application repeated application of rot uh, in infinitesimal rotations is nothing but finite rotations so for an infinitesimal lorentz transformation we have this form for an infinitesimal lorentz transformation lambda nu mu delta nu mu so rank of the tensor has to be kept in mind lambda epsilon nu mu so this is the transformation for the infinitesimal transformations and epsilon mu nu is equal to minus epsilon nu mu so if you are interchanging mu and nu here we are getting negative sign because this is a contravariant tensor so that it exhibits anti-symmetric property based on the properties of tensors and finally what we have is x dash mu is equal to lambda nu mu x nu and x nu is there so in the place of lambda mu nu we need to replace this term so if we multiply this term with this nu nu would get cancelled and um, x mu would come based on the properties of tensor and lambda epsilon nu mu x nu and lambda is the infinitesimal constant uh, that is we have so this is nothing but lambda so lambda into x mu we are having one plus lambda epsilon naught overall if we see if we forget about this x nu x nu x mu here actually lambda is equal to 1 plus lambda epsilon so if we can uh, omit this x mu like that from this equation so we and we may express x s of lambda to first order in lambda as follows so now how to express s of lambda s of lambda lambda is nothing but 1 plus lambda e so that is an i plus lambda e that is nothing but i plus lambda eta s of uh, i plus lambda epsilon is nothing but i plus lambda eta in the similar manner s inverse of i plus lambda epsilon is nothing but i minus lambda eta as here inverse is there so minus as here no inverse is there i plus lambda n eta so we have found a particular s so for the infinitesimal case the condition 18 on s can be written as with the help of 19 so this uh, condition 18 based on this equation 19 this condition 18 which we are having here this gamma multiplied with this s inverse and s so based on this uh, they are saying s inverse is nothing but 1 minus lambda eta gamma nu 1 and s is 1 plus lambda eta and which is equals to this uh, gamma nu that is what we are having there is lambda into gamma mu i think so lambda gamma mu so that one so uh, after that if we do simplification here 1 into gamma mu 1 gamma mu only gamma mu into 1 gamma mu we will get again here minus lambda eta gamma nu lambda minus uh, lambda eta gamma nu again this term multiplied with here in the similar manner uh, we will get this terms uh, after multiplication and I eta square lambda square could be emitted uh, and uh, here we are after multiplication mu mu would get uncancelled and gamma nu so here after multiplication we would have this so shows that eta must be such that so eta has to be uh, in such a form that uh, so based on this equation as these both the equations are same both the angle here gamma nu here also gamma nu here lambda here lambda so here whatever is remaining that must be equal to this so this this entire thing must be equal to this so that is nothing but this gamma nu eta minus eta gamma nu epsilon mu nu gamma mu so using 7 it is seen that eta satisfying 23 so the eta particular eta which satisfies this particular equation is of the form this 
वन बै फोर एप्सला न्यू म्यू गामा न्यू म्यू गामा न्यू गामा म्यू एंड विच कुड बी रिटर्न एज वन बै एट एप्सला न्यू म्यू गामा म्यू न्यू मैनस गामा म्यू गामा न्यू सो दट बेस्ड ऑन दिस थिंग्स दस द रिक्वर्ड फॉर्म ऑफ एस इज सो द फॉर्म ऑफ एस वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट एस ऑफ ई प्लस लैंडा ई दट इज एन ई प्लस लैंडा ईटा सो इन द प्लेस ऑफ ईटा वी नीड टू रिप्लेस दिस ई प्लस लैंडा ई ईटा सो ईटा इज नथिंग बट वन बै फोर एंड इज एप्सलॉन न्यू म्यू सो दट इज हियर दट इज मेन्शनिंग ऑफ एप्सलॉन न्यू म्यू सो फाइनली वी हेव फाउंड आउट एस सो दिस इज द नथिंग बट दि कोवेरियंट फार्मुलेशन ऑफ दि डैरेक्स मैट्रिस सो दट इज द टॉपिक सो थैंक यू